Assalamu alaikum everybody. I am Sayyid Naman Wazir, the guidance counselor at the Future World School, Lahore. Uh, today we have with us uh, Mr. Tala Isan, Ms. Haneen Azhar, and will be shortly be joined by Mr. Muhammad Ahmed. He is the vice chairman of uh, the international youth-led organization, MAPS. And uh, he's running a bit late, but uh, we'll be discussing a few things. So, firstly, Ms. Haneen Azhar. Uh, so, Mr. Ahmed is here. So, it's good to see you, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, we, have, we, are, we are live now. All right, to start off, uh, I will first ask a few things to Tala, because Tala, uh, you being yes, a student at the Future World College, how you were able to you know, find MAPS, this youth-led organization, what prompted you to join this particular uh, program, and uh, you know, what is your experience with MAPS for now? All right, first of all, assalamu alaikum to everybody. And uh, it all started last year whenever I was in A levels, AS levels, and uh, I came to your office and started the application on Global Peace Summit. Uh, I remember you helped me a lot in it. So I went to the uh, summit in Malaysia last year. Whenever I got back, I applied to this organiza organization, MAPS, a youth uh, organization, which is uh, in Pakistan. So uh, I was already a ambassador of peace while I was uh, because I was a delegate in Global Peace Summit. So uh, whenever I got back, I talked to the organization, like if I can work with them and be the part of the team. And uh, recently I got the acceptance letter from the MAPS that I can um, be their MAPS ambassador. And uh, right. that's how it all started. All right. So uh, Mr. Ahmed, uh, welcome, sir, firstly. And uh, could you please explain uh, briefly what is the you know motive of MAPS and how it came into being and what is the purpose behind uh, joining youth on this uh, platform? Thank you so much, Nomar. I would like to extend my gratitude to the Roots team for organizing this webinar. Assalamu alaikum, everyone who is watching over there. And I'm really sorry for the technical issues we just faced like a couple of minutes ago. Uh, good to see uh, bright faces, Tala and Anind, uh, who are really change makers. And I believe that uh, together we can put more efforts to make difference in society. MAPS is a youth led organization and it was established in 2012. If I'm not forgetting the date, it's 28 February 2012 in Rahimia, right. Khan, Punjab. And we led this nationwide network uh, all over and we make it international youth led organization. So uh, what MAPS envisions basically, we envisions to engage our young people in capacity building programs to carry orientation and, and we really manifest to resolve social issues which we are encountering every second day. Unfortunately, we are living in a society uh, which is facing uh, numerous uh, problems and of course crises and we go, use got the responsibility to address one by one. So what MAPS has achieved so far is really, really uh, fascinating. You would love to hear that we have empowered more than 50,000 youngsters of Pakistan in terms of their career placement orientation. Uh, we have established a digital street school uh, that was aimed to enroll child labor into school. The child labor and those students who lacks their interest to the typical education system. We got them into school, we went to mm -hmm. rural areas and we worked on them, we arranged parent counseling sessions and we got into the schools, alhamdulillah. So uh, in just six months, we brainstormed up to 200 students along with the parent enrollment of, physical enrollment of 50 girls and boys children. So mm -hmm. what as we're doing, we Mr. Ahmed, your voice is uh, breaking up a bit. Which says that we have to build the capacities of creating support. Mr. Ahmed, your voice is breaking up, sir. Transformation. And uh, that is what MAPS is doing. Of course, we have to move activities, including COVID 19. Right. We have vulnerable communities who cannot afford. Okay. All right. So uh, I will direct the question, Mr. Ahmed. Arranged sessions for so we your voice is breaking up, sir. You know, a pile of success and accomplish success well with young people. While things and 
So, oh, all right. So he probably has a few connectivity issues. Uh, he'll be joining us in a short while. Uh, Ms. Hani Nazar. So uh, you are leading, already leading a community service organization. Uh, what do you think that uh, this experience has actually done for you? And how do you think that uh, students, what is your message to students who are actually watching this right now, that uh, how they should approach community service or social action? And as a student, what challenges they should expect? And in the longer run, how this can actually help them? So over to you. Right. Right. Um, first of all, hi, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I think the first step or the first challenge is actually figuring out uh, what bothers you in society um, and what your society and the community around you lacks. It could be resources, it could be poverty, it could be other social issues. And once you've decided what your social justice passion is and what the society lacks, you've tried to find a middle ground. And that middle ground is basically what you do for the society. Uh, your community service. I think what my experience has taught me is, well, it's, this, it's innumerable things. Um, I think starting from confidence to how to talk to people, how to communicate, how to market yourself and an organization. But more than that, it's the importance of giving back to the world. Um, you know, these small things that we do, for example, there's, there's various different types of projects that we've done. And in project, there's one person that, that, that just completely leaves us speechless, right? We will do something like this, like thank you, we will do it. And it's just, it's, it's a constant uh, motivation for us, um, academically bhi or otherwise, bhi, um, to just keep going. And I feel like another challenge that the youth faces uh, with community service is, is finding things to actually volunteer with. Um, it was it was what do I do like I don't want to I don't want to volunteer with someone and have to arrange files that's not that's not what I like doing it doesn't motivate me right um, mm -hmm. that is why I started my own organization I'm not going to tell everyone out there to start your own organization uh, however um, your schools are, are a good place to start to go to them and ask them if they have students that have their own organizations or if they uh, endorse any organizations that you can volunteer with and once you've identified what you want to do and with what organization you can start by volunteering with them and then do something of your own as well and you don't need mm. to have an organization that's another thing you don't need to have an organization to have a project or to carry carry out a project you can just do the project mm -hmm. whenever you can uh, so um, yeah. uh, another question just uh, out of the construct, uh, context of what you have already said uh, do you really think that we need uh, to start uh, any, let's say, uh, community service organization or any project for that matter, do we need a good set of team members or any person can actually start it in the premises of their own homes or sitting in their own classroom? Or probably, uh, you know, how, let's just put it that way, how important was the participation of others around you and, uh, you know, your school faculty as well, administration as well, support from them as well? How important was it to actually start off what you wanted to start? Very important. I would be nowhere without the support that I have. I mean, uh, I'm, I was just the idea that we and the execution was all other people. Um, I feel like I started my organization with my cousins, my friends. It was, an, it was an informal sort of a start to something professional, to something organized, to something, you know, uh, more, yeah. Um, but if I didn't have them, I feel like I... I I just have 24 hours in a day and I have so much energy and I have other stuff going on as well. So there's always, always a scale, a limit to how much you can do. And then again, um, so there's this a set of expertise that every single person brings in. Um, and to answer your other question, whether you need to have an organization and whether you can just do it from the comfort of your home, you can do it from the comfort of your home. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, the person who handles IT for my organization, uh, mm -hmm. he never, he, he actually never showed up because of, uh, you know, geographical differences. He, he actually never showed up to any of the projects. He just made our logo and was very helpful. Without him, I don't think we would have been where we are right now. So he had uh, a great role to play as well. Um, that said, the projects don't always have to cost a lot and you don't always have to go somewhere to do them. You can also basically just chip in. You can help raise awareness. You can do whatever you can remaining in your capacity. So yes, there's different levels to how much you can contribute and how. Very nice. So, Atala, I have a question for you. Um, how do you think that 
uh, how important is it for one to actually participate in exchange programs or a joint fellowship? And I would actually like you to touch upon the fellowship uh, aspect as well. And, uh, you know, what sort of impact it does have on a student's uh, holistic profile or personality? All right. So, uh, so I have also participated in exchange program, uh, which is called Yes program. And just like I told earlier that I've also participated in Global Peace Summit Malaysia. So I think like exchange programs, fellowships and conferences, they help you a lot. They help you a lot in like uh, your per personality grooming and all that, because I think the exposure you get from international platform is actually what you cannot really get in Pakistan because you travel, you go outside, meet new people. And as long as you meet new people, you know, like you, you keep on learning. There's like a constant factor of learning. So I think that all these factors, they help a lot, not just academically, they help you a lot in our society as well, because uh, recently whenever I went to uh, US last year, I got back. I, I was involved in a lot of community service projects in Pakistan, whereas before going to the U.S., I have never had even participated in any community service project. Mm -hmm. Whenever I was in the U.S., um, I got to uh, I got to know a lot of opportunities, uh, learning guitar and singing songs. This is one of the, my passion. And whenever I went over there, I I sang uh, I sang and did a lot of concerts in America. And uh, also, it was really actually a dream coming true for me because I always wanted mm -hmm. to perform into another country you know so well that was a great start to uh, my career as well so anyways uh, i would say uh, things like these they help you a lot in every field whenever you meet people you know whenever i was there i got to meet a lot of like minded people who had the same ideas and you know like you exchange your ideas and they become your friend and which is hmm. actually going to help you a lot in your future so um, that is my take on all right so tell a question uh, for mr ahmed now Mr. Ahmed, uh, why should a student apply for this particular fellowship program? Firstly, I would like you to explain the fellowship. And then there is one aspect that is quite, uh, you know, talked about. And that is quite something that is, you know, uh, attractive for our students. That is the fully funded portion of this fellowship. So if you could actually explain that, because we'll be getting a lot of queries regarding that. And, you know, uh, over to you, sir. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Numan. Uh, well, the fellowship program, which we just launched this year, uh, which named as Young Professional Fellowship, you know that Pakistani students have great potential. Pakistani students are contributing in the communities. They are bringing change. They are carrying out various social projects, either it comes to a community change program, as it comes to uh, entrepreneurship, economic development, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of my nation. My, my youngsters are really proud for me. But the basic thing which we lack, still lack, is providing maximum opportunities to our young people equally. If we just see that the upper areas of the country receive many opportunities, but on uh, the basic and the other areas, they lack opportunity. So we are filling this gap. We are picking up right. 10, 10 vibrant, motivated, potential applicants from Pakistan and sending them to Turkey for a learning program. What is going to happen here? Young Professional Fellowship is a platform where they will meet with international trainers. They are going to build their capacity. They're going to work with them in terms of enhancing their further capability to come back to the community and deliver back. So you would be happy to hear that the theme of YPF is very interesting. We're going to organize sessions and trainings on civic engagement, economic development, global competency and cross-cultural collaboration, human rights and peace and youth in the chain making. So whenever we are getting this pulse from Pakistan to Turkey, we are going to work on them more because whenever you are working with international people, international chapters, so you see more collaboration. You see more ideas which comes up from different people. You see a capacity building program which really help you a lot to come back and deliver back. So such opportunities that a platform of YPF is going to change the lives of young people here in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing, which you will be happy to hear that, People go on different programs, they attend events, they attend fellowships, they attend exchange programs. They come back to the community and the community, they actually they actually got the responsibility to, come, to pay back to the community, whatever they have learned over there. So mm -hmm. in IPF, the 10 selected delegates, which we will pick from according to the, uh, while evaluating their profile, uh, their, of course, their submissions, we will be assigning them a project, single project for everyone. Let All me right. just... Put couple of issues we are facing here climate action climate change 
a lack of education, of course, uh, up to 2.5 million uh, children are out of school and it's increasing every day. Quality education, women empowerment, uh, violent extremism. That is the most important topic which we should address. And what we mm. have to do, we are collecting to address this problem. So problems are bigger. Every individual who will come back to Pakistan, they will be assigned one project and they will come back and then deliver the community because the community should be beneficiary from the learning they will adopt over the years. So I believe, I believe, inshallah, when we are going to meet our bright faces over there, you will see a big change, uh, a big uh, mm -hmm. amount, paramount amount of learning and a mm -hmm. great feeling that is very important to brainstorm their ideas, to build their capacity, mm -hmm. to like, uh, of course, to give them more confidence and give them collaboration platforms where they can excel more leadership traits. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Mr. Ahmed, uh, one question from uh, what you've already uh, shared with us. Uh, you you mentioned that you will be you know selecting candidates so uh, although i'll be sharing uh, the link to your website here uh, after this uh, broadcast ends but uh, quickly three things that you will be looking in a candidate and uh, how important it is for them to be fluent in language because considering that you are taking them to turkey so let's just say if somebody whose english language is not that particular uh, particularly good Will he or she also be able to join in? Perfect. So the young sir with uh, social background, with educational background, with religious background, even even we are welcoming the madrasa students to participate over there because they are a real component of society. They should have they should have a strong social profile, educational profile, or uh, like the the way they are working in the community, the inspirations, uh, the inspiring projects they are carrying on, and secondly. The delegates should be from 16 to 35. Obviously, and, yeah. uh, and thirdly, um, uh, what was the question again, please? What is exactly uh, that actually looking at uh, in them, and how important is language? Oh, because right. there's, there's bound to be a language barrier. Well, if your language is, if your English spoken language is so so, like in mediocre, I'm, you can I, I, yeah. we accept that. French doesn't matter because if someone is very credible and even doesn't have 100% grip on English, then of course you cannot reject on the basis of language. It's okay if you are fluent, if okay, if you are middle, if you are low, we are gonna accept you. Right, so, and the last part, uh, obviously the most important one, uh, the fully funded part, could you comment on that? Yeah, it's for everybody. Anybody can, everything can even win this place because uh, the place will be given on the basis of merit, evaluating by profile, uh, if you can inspire us the way you are delivering to the community, if you can inspire us the, the projects you are carrying out to change the lives of people, then definitely this is the place is yours. Hmm. So uh, the pe to the people who are actually watching this, they need to understand the purpose of this uh, meeting here today is to make you understand that we as a nation, we as the youth of this nation, we have to move towards the understanding of this particular thing that only academics is not going to help us grow as a community, grow as a society. We have to think outside of this particular mindset that we have in Pakistan, uh, that you know, uh, only reading those particular books that are taught to us in our schools or in our classrooms, they are going to help us grow, all right? So this particular opportunity and many others, Hanin is all, I'm going to ask a few things uh, to Hanin and Talha as well, but many other opportunities are necessary. So hats off to MAPS for providing this particular platform for students and uh, even young professionals. So the age limit, uh, Mr. Ahmed, uh, there's a question from this sentence that I just said, why 18 to 35? You know, the, it, it's a difference of generation between 18 to 35. So, uh, why 18 to 35? It's 16 to 35, not 18. 16 to 35, yeah. So, so. of course, <laughs> if you just evaluate the youth and their age and, of course, dimensions, so, of course, uh, you will say that the young age, the youth, basically, the adulthood starts from 16 to 35. So, of course, we are considering this. If you go so, up to 80, 40 to 45, then definitely you are no, no more youth. So what my take in this is that, you know, probably you're aiming uh, the our, our teenagers to work with young professionals who probably just entered their particular field 
or they are probably going to do something in their particular field so they can both learn from each other's experiences all right so uh, talha you have been on an international uh, you know on, on a couple of international uh, summits and a couple of national exchange pro programs already so uh, how is it like what sort of challenges one should actually feel or be prepared for if they are planning on moving in that particular direction that they end up in a, a fellowship or an exchange program okay so if you are actually getting selected into a program which is actually a, it can be a, an exchange program or a fellowship program the number one tip that i will give to all of my friends out there is that be flexible learn how to be flexible in an environment learn how to be you know you have to work on your communication skills because you're going to meet people from all across the globe and if you are the shy person if you you have to make this thing happen that you that you are good at interacting with people because that's how actually you're going to end up having that exchange program very wonderful because that's the only thing of the exchange programs and all the summers that you go and meet people over there and exchange your ideas so what i think is that number one should be be flexible if you are given any situation you 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 are the one who is supposed to learn that how you can fit yourself into the given situation and also right. but uh by the number two i said to be like uh you need to work on your communication skill it is also also very important because you need to know like you know how to interact with the people so i think that these two tips would help uh, all the students out there if they are looking forward to go attend the summit or the fellowship program which is going to happen yeah. so hanin uh, moving on from the, what tala said uh, how important do you think tolerance the, the aspect of tolerance has to be if you are going to represent your country in an, in an international setting where you might find people who are not of the same mindset or of the same views and beliefs so uh, how important this tolerance factor is right that is a very good question it has very it has a lot of different layers to it um i think generally hum sab ka ek hai uh, thoda sa masla ki we all like to think of ourselves as the most tolerant person right and that's not always true kyunki we uh, pakistan is a very homogenous place it's 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 um it's not as diverse as one would say it's very diverse and it's it's culturally beautiful um what i'm trying to say is there's not a lot of ethnicities a lot not a lot of races um that live together in pakistan so for example in the us you see you see people from a lot of different backgrounds you see people that have immigrated from around the world um and i think that aspect of tolerance is is very important and it's it's, it's something that you need to start working towards consciously um you need to realize ke, ke where your subconscious biases lie like you look at someone or they say something and you're constant you, you instantly dismiss them that's where your bias lies you need to identify that and then eliminate that now for example um i gave around 77 presentations about pakistan in my community in my school middle schools and everything and a lot of the questions were sometimes very uh amusing you know just just a little mm. absurd and a little amusing um you know they would look up and say uh, so your does your dad own a car has your dad ever owned a car or yeah. uh, you know just like how do you then one was how do you you know speak so uh, how can you speak with us like English, how can yeah, you communicate so, so well if you right mm -hmm. if you've lived in pakistan your entire life and pakistan was always with a with a with a you know kind of like an exclam exclamation like you know, they were always uh, high pitched pakistan in 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 the sentences Uh, but that was always very nice to hear in a way ke you know i was there and i was like ha huh, these are innocent questions they don't mean anything bad and here's what i have to say about them and uske baad i actually became closest friends with a lot of those people that had questions like that and i could have gotten offended but that would have only harmed me and done no good so, so yes tolerance is very very important right so mr ahmed let's just say uh, a student or a young professional has been selected by maps all right they filled out the application they have you know they've gone through your interview process and whatever process that is and you've selected them to move with you in turkey so could you please uh, you know touch upon what they are going to experience in turkey and uh, what are the dates and what are again what are the things that you expect your representatives who are going to represent pakistan and are they they are going to be any other countries any other representatives from other countries as well or it is just going to be pakistani nationals along with uh, turkish nationals <clears throat> all right 
let me just compile your question in uh, one para so it will be easy to understand for the audience uh, watching this webinar well uh, number one the dates are from 13th to 18th october uh, 19th october sorry and the most fascinating thing which is really going to be a very captivating when somebody is going to fellowship those 10 people who will be selected for fellowship they will also attend global peace summit in turkey and they will interact with 150 plus countries there so it's a combo it's a combo like you are if you are buying a chicken burger then they feel you are getting a uh, bros too so it's a combo yeah. it's a combo like you are going to meet with 150 plus like minded youth the, the people who are really a change maker, Forbes enlisted people, Diana Award winners people. So what is happening there? I agree with Harin. She says about tolerance and diversification of the culture. And of course, we believe in inclusivity. We believe that when we are going to gather people from different globes, we must be practicing inclusivity over there. When it comes to inclusivity, when it comes to interaction, intersectional dialogue is very important. So. Mm the beneficiaries will definitely be attaining training sessions from international trainers along with free offers to join Global Peace Summit and they will yeah. be enjoying perks over there. One more right. thing is important to understand, one that Pakistani, or I, I'm going to repeat it again, Pakistani youth has great potential. Unfortunately, mm. we lack opportunities, we lack platform. So this is the first practice, but you will witness many more in the coming years that we are going to inshallah facilitate 100 youngsters of Pakistan who are a real change maker who are already creating impact in society or who intends to do something but they do not have a, they, but they lack with resources, tools, technical sports. We are here to empower our students because our youngsters, our Pakistanis are now a days a real hope. As the way we are polarized, unfortunately we are living in a polarized society. We are, going to, we are suffering many social issues and mm -hmm. every issue will be addressed if you and me and the people sitting in this window or watching us here will take the responsibility. We are, we are preferring, we are emphasizing on global citizenship because mm -hmm. if the, our citizens our, uh, citizen are global, then definitely we will not have any further barrier who can prevent us to do something bigger in life. So, mm -hmm. inshallah, once again, this fellowship will be a real time remarkable approach for the youngsters who want to do something for Pakistan, who are motivated, who are inspired, who have potential, who are intellectual, who have wisdom, who are brilliant. This mm. platform is yours. And when you will come back, you will see those stands will be inspiring, will be benefiting thousands here in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Talha, uh, so my question to you now. Uh, in your experience, since you've already been uh, internationally, you've represented us, uh, there is a mindset. There is a mindset with our students where they think that, you know, that if they have joined a particular summit or a fellowship or a summer program, that is just going to be fun. All right. They're going to enjoy. They're going to have fun. They're going to do sightseeing. And, uh, you know, sometimes once they, uh, once they are, you know, subjected to certain limitations of that particular area that they are they are in they feel a bit rebellious especially our pakistani youth so uh, what uh, what actually you know you went through that process as well so how much in of in a shock you were initially and uh, could you please ex share your experience and tell how you coped with it and actually came into uh, realize that this is something useful this is something that you actually have to do in the longer run, that you have to pursue in Pakistan as well. So how did you came out of that initial shock? OK, so let, let me talk about the fun part first. Uh, so whenever there is exchange programs, there is summits, or anything going like that, the fun part is just a little part of that big part, all right? Because I remember whenever I was going to uh, US for an exchange uh, program, the only thing that I had in mind is, of course, like you said, Pakistani thinking. I was just imagining like the day I'm going to land in uh, US, I'm probably going to be in the New York and probably going to live in the Manhattan for like first two months. And then, then we're going to go move to Los Angeles and, you know, all those things. But what I, I think I, I just went for like a one and a half month to uh, all my recreation and all that. It was just for one and a half month. And it was just a part of this. 
So what I would say is that if you are uh, actually looking for fun, then this is not really a good opportunity because there is a purpose of the summit. There's a purpose of the fellowship and you need to focus on that. And I'm pretty sure for the people who are actually applying, uh, they, they have to show their interest. And if their interest is just like sightseeing and all those things, I think that it, it would not be a very good impact on their application as well. So, uh, well, like I said, uh, I also went to the summit in Malaysia. So <laughs> I actually literally just had like four to five days over there and um, the entire schedule was super packed. And the only day I got to do that fun part was the last day. I would even say the last night I was there in Malaysia. So uh, I did not have a lot of time for all those fun parts, mm -hmm. even though our schedule uh, was really packed and we had a lot of activities uh, in the summit which I guess was way better than having those uh, sightseeing outside. Yes. Well, I guess uh, Mr. Naman's uh, internet is not there. So guys, I will uh, now talk about the application process of uh, the Young Professional uh, Fellowship. So uh, it's actually not that uh, difficult. You just have to go to uh, maps.pk.org uh, my bad, maps.org.pk, that's the website of uh, the application. And uh, you, have to pay, you have to pay the 3,500 rupees uh, fee for the application. So we see a lot of questions on uh, social media, people asking about why is there a 3,500 rupees uh, application fee? So I would answer that right away, that the application fee is just because only the, uh, so that the serious applicants can apply. Because if there would not be any application fee, there's going to be 10,000 people uh, going to apply to it, even though people who are not really serious and just trying to, you know, trying their luck, I would say. So uh, the application fee is set just because of this. So they, only the serious applicants apply and they can filter out all those people who actually do not have any interest for the fellowship. So uh, that's my question to it. And also you have to write like two personal uh, statements essay on the uh, website and uh, you have to pay through, you have to pay that application fees to their bank account that is on, uh, that is on their page. Plus, uh, Sir Numan, I would like to tell you that whenever you went off, I was just telling the application process of the I fellowship. So, uh, I apologize for that, uh, you know, first of, uh, whatever we say, light and all that. So yeah, it, I'm lucky that, I got back. See, Hanin uh, is not. <laughs> See, just Hanin just left. That's fine. So, uh, Mr. Ahmed, uh, one thing that you initially started off with was that the students who are actually going to represent us in Turkey, once they come back there, you're going to assign them some certain tasks. All right. Yeah. So, uh, if you could, you know, quickly touch upon a few things that you believe uh, the you will be giving these students, and if let's say there were a few tasks that you gave to a few students earlier. Uh, so if you could, you know, uh, share that experience as well. Very good question, Numan. Uh, the projects which you will assign them will on the base of the social issues we are having in, in our society. So let's talk about uh, child labor. So if somebody, if someone has a background to working in the education sector, then definitely we'll be giving them assignments to visit the areas where basically the child labor is existing. Uh, we will eliminate them, we will brainstorm them, how we'll meet the families, so we will introduce them digital tools and we'll get them into school. So this the practice has been very successful and we also engage scholarship here to build the interest of uh, a child because the child who is a labor is uh, earning bread and butter for the family. So we do not want to clench that, but we want to give them a minor stipend to continue both things, school and of course household things. And secondly, when it comes to climate change, we have already given like a couple of activities to our ambassadors who came back from uh, different events. They were planting hundreds of trees in their society because, uh, you know, uh, fortunately, luckily and happily, I would like to share here that Pakistan has already accomplished 10 years ago the climate uh, uh, challenge. Which was given and that is not only uh, possible from the end of comment, but of course, with the young people, with the civil societies are a real stakeholder. So we are contributing our part. So if we talk about third thing, that is human rights. Unfortunately, human rights violation is expanding, is getting more emergency in, in every society, not in Pakistan, but globally. What is ha what happened in uh, United States, you and me very well know about George Floyd who was suffocated in that. And after that, the entire US was flared up with civil unrest. So and human rights violation, either it comes to domestic violence, 
when it comes to the, the violence on child, whatever the thing are, we are going to amplify our voice against such things. We cannot sit silent. We cannot just say, okay, this is happening and we are going to be a digital, digital activist. We are going to organize very peaceful protests for that. Mm -hmm. And the basic thing which I emphasize always that the government should be, should be more responsible and we have to urge our government to constitute laws and formulate policies to capture mm -hmm. those who do such kind of commitments. So such commits are really a real, real stigma of the society, which are getting us more in That's dialogue. Quite and the dilemma is very horrible. I understand. So, uh, I mean, one question from you uh, is that, you know, the, the concept or the thing that we say about child labor, all right? So uh, what, what do you believe? How do you believe that living in a society, living in the economy as we have in living in Pakistan, uh, what is the actual definition of child labor here in Pakistan? You as uh, a young person who is running an organization already. So uh, you see, we have uh, this, we, I would like to call it help that helps at home. And even uh, the people normally, even these uh, small young children are probably underage. So how to do that and how to make it sustainable in the longer run? If you could please comment. On right. Um, so I'll be honest with you, um, sir, uh, Noman. I actually, um, it's, it's, it's very hard to form an actual, you know, hard opinion on this because there's so many variables that we have to take into account. Um, there's a lot of families who, whose sole, sole livelihood depends on children earning. Does that justify it ethically? Absolutely not. It's still very unethical. Um, but given the economic conditions of Pakistan, you can't ban child labor because as soon as you ban child labor, uh, you should, you know, you, it's, it's on you to also provide for the families, for the children um, themselves. Because if the, if the children aren't being educated, they're, they're, they're probably, uh, you know, suffering from starvation. Um, so there's these two things that we need to take into account. So when you are trying to eliminate child labor, I think to make it sustainable, you also need to take into account what's going to cause what's going to be the consequence of that ban of, 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 of you know, reducing child labor? It's going to be uh, the lack of resources within the families with, with those children. And so what, what Ahmed is doing um, is wonderful. It's, it's, it's uh, an initiative that goes and that uh, raises awareness. I think awareness is, is the first thing. Uh, I think, you know, personally, that might not be really accepted. But I think, you know, talking about family planning is another thing you know it's just not talked about and you need to raise awareness about that and the government can do that on their level um through television um and and through other advertisements that actually reaches those population um that population and i feel is doing is great it's like free education and and you're giving them you're giving parents at least at least a little bit of a more and more incentive to send their kids to school because at least now they don't have to pay for it uh even right. if they the children are not bringing revenue in uh, so yeah, it's it's sad. It's sad. Right, it's uh, a collective effort, on. I guess. Uh, yes. Definitely. All you know, tears of the society have to pitch in. Uh, Talha, we have a question. So uh, Mr. Mohammed Yaqub has asked, in the achievement question part, we have to write only our achievements or our whole biography. So. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so we can uh, in the achievement passage, you can write actually what extracurricular activities that you are enrolled in your college, in your university, or uh, in your school. And also uh, you can put like if you have participated in MUNs and all these, and if you are a part of any society at your uh, school, these are the things that should be, uh, he should write in his application at the achievements um, section. Right. Mr. Ahmed, if you could, uh, if you would like to comment on that as well. Tala has well accomplished this. Uh, well, uh, because I, I can see Tala is even uh, better guiding than me about the process, about the things. So I really appreciate Talha's for taking it very serious. So uh, I would like to just comment you. on Hanin's uh, narrative about child labor. She is very, she is absolutely right. We cannot let's, like clench the better and better of the families because childs who are working in different domains, different societies, they are just banned because of the lack of resources. Their parents are not enough capable to feed every child. What we did in registered schools when we enrolled 50 students into school, we didn't allow them to quit their work because I call them skilled labor, not child labor. If someone is working in a motorcycle shop, 
and learning about how to fix the parts of motorcycle part time maneuvering and carrying on his his or her school in morning and you we don't have any problem this skilled person i will not call child ever again this skilled person will definitely be, become more experienced when he will be graduated while well, he will just cross up his private room intermediate he can open up his own shop we just have to understand that every matter which depicts like a very horrible thing the society is really going through stigma and polarization we mm -hmm. always understand there is always a soft solution you cannot enforce people unfortunately pakistan is lacking economically it is the responsibility of the government to take care of its inhabitants but unfortunately our economy is not strong we are getting more serious deaths every day i just mm -hmm. want to say something here in 2020 2021 we are going to enroll 100 children into school by digitally inspiring them not just educating that you should go to school and telling them about the benefits of going to school at any school about futures and their goals and orientations mm -hmm. we are just going to tell them that this is your school in the morning and this is your workplace in the evening carry on both things because these both things are going to change your future not only one thing mm -hmm. a good point a very valid point so uh, i hope that we have actually touched upon every aspect of the fellowship talha and if you would like to you know add anything uh, you can you know uh, and then i would just like to say in listening in all right uh, so in then i would just like to say that our uh, young uh, professional fellowship is actually a really great opportunity for all those uh, students out there and uh since the deadline is approaching really near the deadline is uh, august 10th so i would recommend everybody to apply as early as you can because we just probably got like probably 10 or 12 days left so uh oh. i would just recommend everybody so uh they can apply as early as they can and good luck for your um, for getting the acceptance from the fellowship thank you yeah. all right so one liner from you honey oh uh bas yahi ke just the first chance you get just grab at these opportunities just don't let them pass they they they're amazing they change you absolutely right so we have a question from mr raj kumar two individual fellowships have been announced i am a government teacher can i apply for both if mr. the government teacher applies uh, under the eligibility criteria age and of course Uh, background i told you before it's not only fixed up for social uh, backgrounds but if you have educational achievements if you're working in education sector and you meet the criteria it's yours mm -hmm. so you're not going to discriminate on the fact that somebody has all is already a member of another fellowship so if they fit the criteria if they match your criteria they can you know join in all right uh, thank you everybody whoever joined us thank you mr ahmed uh thank you ms hanin and mr tala for uh, joining in and explaining in such detail about this uh, excellent initiative i encourage all the students and young professionals who are actually who have joined us uh to i have shared the link to that uh, to, to the maps uh, website you can go and you can click on uh, the fellowship link as well i encourage you to apply before the 10th i again uh, to the students uh go through the questions thoroughly all right do not just skip any question you know focus on the things that you actually think are your strengths so that this is actually uh, helpful to you and at the end of the day uh, it helps mr ahmed and his team to you know actually uh, decide whether they want to have you on board or not so you have to present yourself as somebody who is uh, let's say who can uh, you know who can be presented as somebody who can represent pakistan in a foreign country so thank you very much everybody thank you very much for your time and i hope that uh, this proves fruitful for everybody sure thank you thank you very much from lahore pakistan zindabad pakistan zindabad pakistan zindabad Hello, please.